bold ideas, big initiatives. Well, that's what it's going to take in order to get transit moving in this country. Hello, I'm Adrian Batra. With me are Brian Lilly and Warren Kinsella. Okay, Brian, the premier of the biggest province in the country with the biggest population, most amount of people moving here on, a, on an annual basis. We have gridlock everywhere from north to south to east to west in this province. Yep. And so Premier Doug Ford comes out with an idea, and all of our viewers would be familiar because they, they, they've heard of it or they've been here, is the 401 highway. It's a 400 series of highways all across Ontario. Doug Ford has propo proposed that they study tunneling underneath the 401 in order to create more room for capacity as the province continues to grow uh, and there's more and more vehicles on the road. So is this a multi-billion dollar boondoggle in the making or is there something to this? This idea is absolutely crazy, but it might work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll say this. Uh, uh, they're not saying they're going to do it yet. They're launching a feasibility study and you know, quite frankly, the opposition parties, if they were smart, would have said yesterday, you know, we welcome a feasibility study, but we'd like to look at other alternatives and we'd like to to see other possibilities. We need to do something. Instead, Doug Ford says, you know what? Traffic's really bad. Gridlock's horrible. It's, it's slowing down your commute to and from work. It's slowing down business. We need to do something. Here's my idea. And immediately all three opposition leaders, oh no, we couldn't possibly do that and they point to the big dig in Boston. Well, that's one tunnel. And by the way, it's open now and it works. But there are massive tunnels in Norway, in Japan, in Australia, where these types of things have been done and they've worked. So let's study it here. Let's look for a solution instead of just being the party of collective, no, no, we can't do anything. No, we can't have nice things. Guess what? Bike lanes and subways won't solve everything. But the only solution the other opposition leaders came up with was, well, we need to invest more in public transit. Right now, the Ford government's putting $3 of investment into public transit for every dollar they're spending on highways. The public transit's being built, and Ford's tunnel idea would include some form of public transit. They haven't decided what yet. You know, I, I, I share some of the skepticism, quite frankly, Warren. I, I mean, governments of all levels and stripes have proven themselves incapable of actually getting big public transit, like on the transit issue, uh, done, done on time, done on, you know, when, within that time frame. And I point simply to the Crosstown Eglinton LRT, which yep. is in the city, heart of the city of Toronto, goes east to west, still not open after 11, almost 12 years. Uh, a generation of, of kids have already grown up and this thing is still not open. So when you think of, when you think of and hear about such a significant undertaking, you just say government hasn't done it well. Name one thing that it does well. But I think what's important here is the recognition that our, our, our options and alternatives are, are minimal based on our urban planning, based on our land use something like this at the minimum should be explored um, if not pursued in certain uh, portions of it if it's deemed feasible right yeah right no and i think you are right you know governments have shown unlike the time of the roman Colosseum or the pyramids governments have become pretty lousy at doing major infrastructure per particularly transportation infra infrastructure um, however you know, as Brian's pointed out, it is just a feasibility study that he hasn't said we're going to do this, um, but they do need to do something. It is the busiest highway. The 401 is the busiest highway in North America, and it's getting busier all the time. But the thing that bugs me, whether it's a good idea or not, what was bugging me, and I tweeted about this this morning, is like, you know, is, I'll paint a picture. So you've got in the deepest annex, you got the guy wearing his drug rug and listening to CBC radio and reading the Toronto Star, and he's wearing Birkenstocks with socks. You should never wear sandals with socks. And just like if Doug Ford said the sky was blue, right, and the grass is green, he, this guy would say, no, the sky is green and the grass yeah. is blue. Like every single goddamn thing that comes out of Doug Ford's mouth, right, and I'm not saying he's perfect, but he's you know, he's obviously got a couple of majority governments 
a lot of people think he's doing a pretty good job. Every single thing he says, these people come out against it. And it is just like so boring. I'm so mm -hmm. over it. It's like, okay, well, then what's your idea? We all can't ride bicycles in February from Markham to get to work, you know? And, and by the way, we would like some of you to return to work. So yeah. like, you know, it, it just drives me bit to distraction. The fact that they just cannot let this guy get off a single suggestion, a single idea without attacking it. And we're tunneling experts now. We've tunneled uh, kilometers and kilometers of subway, and this is not gonna be any different. It will be one of the world's longest tunnels. You know, Brian, I think that's such an important point because if we were to go to a provincial election, which people are musing that it might happen before 2026, it might be sometime early 2025, uh, the what well, one would consider to be the opposition, main opposition is are the Liberals with a new leader and the former mayor of Mississauga, Bonnie Crombie, but they have not made a dent. They are not, um, you know, really, other than perhaps changing the logo on the on their name of liberal, uh, they really aren't making much of an impact. And and what's interesting about a proposal such as this one in particular, it was immediately right out of the gate that the that uh, the, thir the leader of third party uh, Bonnie Crombie opposed it. She just out out of hand alleges that Doug Ford is corrupt and wants to pay people off because of the Greenbelt scandal and and, yeah. and add, add it all up. Her constituents, people that would support the Liberal Party are sitting in their row, uh, sitting on the highways, sitting in their cars, stuck in traffic. And so Doug Ford, for, for some of the challenges his government has put forward, has a sense of what is really going on in people's lives and is more in touch and in tune with them than certainly any of the opposition parties are. Bonnie Crombie is still treated as a big star, but she hasn't moved the polling needle and mm -hmm. her party is still underperforming the NDP in fundraising. They've raised less money year to date than the NDP. I know they got a big dinner coming up later this year. Good for them. You need to do something. But here's my problem with the, the, the Liberals and the NDP and the Greens in the last election. And I've said this before. I could get their news releases and sometimes they'd all arrive in my inbox within minutes. I could take the name from one party, put it on the other. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference. They all sound exactly the same. All right, so what's your value proposition? Why would I vote for you instead of the other two? Uh, or instead of this guy who's coming up with a solution that doesn't sound like it was for Warren's uh, buddy oh. in Deepest Darkest Annex, where they li live in multi-million dollar <laughs> homes next to a subway station with a sign that says, stop the 413. Um, <laughs> Those guys are never voting Doug Ford. Ford is looking, uh, you know, despite he's doing a ton of things for Toronto, for which he will get no credit, no votes. He's looking after where people live. And Bonnie Crombie was the mayor of Mississauga. She should know that commuting is a major issue. And instead, mm -hmm. because her party is now captive to the same downtown faculty club mindset of the NDP, she doesn't turn around and say, let's come up with something to help voters in Mississauga or Oshawa or anywhere in the suburbs. She's talking to the downtown faculty club people that now control the Liberal Party of Ontario. I'm told, Warren, that if you went back in, you would not recognize the party that you once helped lead this province for 15 years because it has become the NDP, even with Crombie as leader. Well, you know, you could say the same thing about your, your party federally too, Warren, but uh, hey, look, you, you know, you look great in blue. So there's a, uh, <laughs> there's a consideration for you there. But last word to you, just as far as um, this, no, this musing about a potentially early election uh, in Ontario, being it uh, maybe potentially spring 2025, I guess we'll see where things go federally. As far as an election issue, how does Doug Ford use this um, without getting all that smear and 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 all the, the scandal plagued issues with the green belt thrown on him that he's just there to pad the pockets of his developer buddies and and whatnot? Or is that just again a narrative that just doesn't stick? I just want to stress at the outset, it is no longer my party federally <laughs> <Yes>. or provincially. <laughs> I am a Chrétien liberal and I was a McGinty liberal, and those are very different animals than what's in charge now. Um, but, you know, I think that um, if I were advising Ford, 
I would advise them to go before Prime Minister Polyev gets sworn in. And the reason for that is I don't think Polyev has any choice but to cut the living hell out of government and, and peel back some of the irresponsible spending that the Trudeau guys have done. And then when they get in there, I think they're going to find the books are even worse. They're mm -hmm. going to find scandal upon scandal because of the way these guys have behaved fiscally. So Ford needs to get ahead of that because he doesn't want, when he goes to the doors, to have people mad about the loss of their favorite program that, you know, Polyev did. He doesn't want to get the blame for that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when does Ford go? I think the latest he can wait is spring of 2025. He's obviously uh, eliminated the possibility of it happening this fall. It's hard to have an election in the winter. So my bet is, and you know, I get these bets wrong with you two all the time. I'm thinking <laughs> March for April or April for May 2025 for the provincial election. Well, let us know what you think in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to the TorontoSun.com. You'll find commentary and coverage there. You will not find anywhere else.